In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the great and some of the not so great things about the Google Pixel 8 Pro. And as always, we're starting off with the good stuff. The design changes this year are great. Google skipped the glossy finish on the back in favor of the frosted matte glass, thank goodness. The phone's frame is thicker, the corners are more rounded, all while keeping that signature camera visor. The buttons are as clicky as ever, the haptics remain top tier, the speakers sound better, and the display is now flat. Now that display is excellent, it's super crisp and colorful, it can scale all the way down to 1 hertz for better efficiency, the bezels are about perfectly symmetrical, and it gets impressively bright. We're looking at a whopping 2400 nits peak brightness, that's, that's pretty crazy. So you'll have little to no issue viewing the screen in direct sunlight. Of course, we gotta mention the cameras. Armed with a refreshed and very robust triple camera array, the 8 Pro delivers outstanding results in pretty much every environment and condition. Overall versatility got a bump with added Pro controls, video capture got upgraded this year, it's gotten much, much better, and there are a handful of new AI features to mess around with that aim to put a spin on how you handle post-processing. Once again, the cameras remain at the top of the list of reasons to get this phone. That front-facing camera takes good photos too, but its superpower actually has to do with Class 3 biometrics. This means that you can use the 8 Pro's face unlock for banking applications and password managers, things like that. Up until this point, the only other Android phone that had that level of biometrics was the Pixel 4 from 2019. This is impressive seeing as how it's using the front-facing camera and the Tensor G3 with machine learning. No other sensors needed. Seven years of OS updates. Yes, seven whole years of OS updates is what Google's promised for this phone. While most users may not use their 8 Pro for that long, it's nice to see the bar for long-term support get raised, encouraging other OEMs to up their game. Provided Google keeps up with this commitment, this is a big plus for buyers, even if they don't plan on keeping their phone for that long. As for the not so great stuff, well, the Pixel 8 Pro got a $100 increase to its starting price, which now sits at $1,000. Now, while the upgrades and refinements are all nice, it's still a bit of a bummer when we're still looking at things like 128 gigabytes of storage in the base model, storage that didn't get any faster than the 7 Pro storage, might I add. And speaking of faster, this goes hand in hand with the fact that the 8 Pro is maxed at 30 watt charging, a mere 7 watt upgrade from the 7 Pro. Now, we'll take that, I guess, uh, but it's a little over an hour and a half wait to charge this phone from 0 to 100%. Is this the absolute worst thing in the world? No. However, at this point, for a $1,000 flagship phone released this late in the year, you should be able to juice the phone up faster without question. Let's face it, the Tensor G3 is a great processor for what it can do for the software side of things. We shouldn't ignore those benefits. But we also can't ignore the G3 still lags far behind what other processors are capable of when it comes to raw performance. For the heavy mobile gamers, there are plenty of other devices out there with processors that'll be more up to the task. For everyday use, this will run pretty warm, but the processor will get the job done. But if raw power is what you're after, look elsewhere. A couple head-scratching things about this phone include the lack of display output support using the USB-C port, something that I would expect to get in a phone in this price tier and has Pro in its name. The other is this thermometer. Now we'll add this to the list of Google's yearly experimental Pixel editions, but to my understanding the main point of this thing hasn't even arrived yet. Ultimately, it's supposed to be able to measure the temperature of humans, and Google's waiting for FDA approval on that, so that does have some potential depending on how well it works, but as of now, that falls right in line with a couple of other things we're still waiting on. Video Boost and Video Night Sight didn't launch with a phone either, so as of this video, in certain areas you could say that the 8 Pro launched as a bit of an unfinished product. Either way, we feel that the Google Pixel 8 Pro is a very good phone, and if you want our complete thoughts on it, check out our full written review linked below. It's been Zach, and thanks for watching.